Long distance swimmer Ben Lecomte has his whole heart invested in bringing attention to ocean health. But as he crosses the Pacific, medics are paying close attention to the health of his actual heart. Researchers want to see how the body's hardest working muscle adapts over months of extreme exercise. We do this together with NASA. They basically want to know the function of the heart and the structure of the heart during the swim. They tell them how, for example, astronauts, when they do extreme things, uh, how their heart will develop as well. They're looking to see if the center of the heart hardens through all this excessive training. We'll see if there is a change in the EKG actually happening. We're also looking to see if Ben has a low heart rate variability one day, does that affect how he swims the next day, his length, his output, his general well-being. As with any other muscle, a more active heart will strengthen over time, enabling it to pump oxygenated blood throughout the body at a higher rate. This thickening process and the resulting change in blood flow can be visualized with ultrasound. Ultrasound is a really nice technique to capture both the function and the structure of the heart. And it's a non-invasive technique. You can measure flow and all kinds of stuff without actually entering the body because you see straight from the body. This is the left uh, atria and this is the right atria with the triple split valve in the middle. This is the mitralic valve again. If I turn it a little bit, you can see that now you see the inlet to the left ventricle from the left atria to the left uh, ventricle, and this is the outlet here. Now I'm going to add some color. Now you can actually see how the blood is flowing. His heart and his body is used to do low intensity but long duration exercise, endurance, but he's doing really well. An ultrasound setup is not exactly portable and requires a professional to operate. That's why Ben's also sporting a small digital body-worn monitor developed by Linda Cole, a longtime friend and supporter of Ben and the crew. The heart rate monitor is composed of the recorder and the electrode, and we want to be able to utilize that monitor in every type of environment. From the electrode, there's three parts that have gel on the back of it. The signal coming from the body goes to that gel. It goes up to the recorder, and it produces an EKG signal. Some of the challenges in creating a monitor that will work for athletes swimming are sweat, water, body movement. The newest device, the SL device, which is what Ben is wearing, is uh, a compilation of everything we learned. Linda and her team are interested in R to R variability, a cardiovascular metric that essentially measures how adaptable the heart can be. When you exercise, your heart rate increases. If it's 60 beats per minute all day long, you probably have pacemaker in, where that muscle and the arteries and everything are hardening around it. It's a muscle, you wanna have elasticity. To get heart rate variability data from Ben, we measure the incident between each heartbeat. So the P wave is the very first part of the EKG signal. And then you have the Q, the R, the S, and the T. So when you're measuring, you're looking for the distance from the P to the Q or the P to the T, or if you're looking for a wide QRS. So those are some of the different things that we could measure. So right here, this is Ben, and his heart rate is 94 beats per minute, and he is not swimming here. Well, there is a log that I write every day, and it's something that is put online. The log book that he keeps is a great thing, because it tells us how the water is, how his emotional state is. We put that together with the data that we collect and we're seeing if we can predict anything. The lightweight waterproof technology Linda developed for Ben has already solved challenges in cardiovascular medicine. For instance, it can provide instant diagnostics for something called long QT syndrome in children, a potentially fatal condition where an erratic heartbeat can cause fainting or seizures. They can tell if you have the syndrome immediately by going into the water. By hitting into cold water, the measurements will totally show themselves. So I said to the doctor, well, you know, I have somebody in the water. He's on prototype electrodes. I cut and pasted some of the strips together and sent them to him that night. And I said, look, you know, remember this is a prototype. And he came back and he said, I've never seen anything so great. It's so easy to measure, it looks great. And now you can put those kids in the water and you could diagnose this syndrome. Why wouldn't you get excited about that? 
That type of impact is exactly what Ben and the secret crew hoped this mission would create, a tangible difference in the lives of others, showcasing how we can best monitor and care for our planet and our own bodies alike. The work that we've done with Ben is helping us get these types of materials out into the industry today so that we can help diagnose these other illnesses. Be sure to visit seeker.com slash the swim to read daily updates from Ben LeCompte, track his progress in real time, and watch more videos about the science happening on board Seeker. Click here for this next episode, and don't forget to subscribe. Thanks for watching.